to make sure that our history is uh, recorded in a manner that will be handed down to our children that they can reflect on and uh, look at some of the lessons that we can learn from the experiences. The announcement by the Social Development Minister is good news for Dr. Terence Marshall and members of the Mars Bishop and October 19th Matry Foundation. He says they have been clamoring for recognition for the victims for years. I can speak for them and I can say we are elated. We are very happy that such a decision has been taken. It is what we have struggled for basically for the last 25 years or more since the events took place. As you know, Every 19th, we hold a commemorative activity at Fort George, at the site where many of these people were gunned down. And at that activity, every single year, we make the call for that day to be recognized. And not only recognized for what it is worth, but recognized in a bigger way. In fact, this is a step in the right direction. Our call really is for October the 19th to be declared a national holiday. That is what we have been struggling for over the years. And we believe that it is a day that deserves that kind of, of, of importance, that kind of um, significance, because it represents for us the most tragic day in our history as a people, particularly our modern, modern day history, when the Prime Minister, many of his cabinet colleagues, and many innocent Grenadians lost their lives in a most tragic way. Dr. Marichaud has complimented the government and describes the initiative as part of efforts to rectify our history. He agrees it's a step in the right direction. Every single October 25th, we'll go to the grave site of those who lost their lives defending Grenada's independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity. That is the soldiers who lost their lives and there's this mass grave at the St. George's Cemetery where every single October the 19th, I will go with a, a couple of my colleagues and recognize those who lost their lives um, on October the 25th. We believe also that these people deserve recognition. And just as how we are now recognizing the victims of October the 19th, we certainly hope that one day a monument we, would be erected. We have a great side, you also um, are in the process of getting the assistance to develop this monument as well, so that those soldiers who lost their lives on October the, the, the 25th, defending Grenada's independence, will also gain the kind of recognition that they also truly deserve. If crime and violence is not addressed aggressively in the region, I predict that in 10 years' time there will be a major security problem. The words of Assistant Secretary General to the Organization of American States, Ambassador Albert Ramdin, as he addressed members of the media on Monday in St. George's. We get more in this report. Ambassador Ramdin stated that for years the region has been recording considerable gruesome cases of crime and violence in member territories. One can remember the fiasco in Jamaica earlier this year with the fight between Tivoli residents and law enforcement officers. Then there was the massacre in Guyana which claimed the lives of numerous families in 2008. For these reasons and more, the OAS have been embarking on a number of regional programs to get leaders to join forces in creating strategies and projects that could address the issue. Most recently, there was a Caribbean conference in St. Kitts and Nevis where ministers examined the problem of crime and violence in the region and came up with probable short and long-term methods. Mr. Ramdin suggests that education, employment, and provision of socially accepted lifestyles be considered when dealing with the issue. Yes, are crime and violence. How do we deal with crime and violence? Not only from an ad hoc perspective. That means, you know, higher sentences, strengthening police forces, better cooperation between countries, and so on. The question is, how do we deal with it structurally? How do we deal with it on the long term? And that has to do with employment, with fighting poverty, with education, with, you know, um, teaching children very young how to behave in society and what is expected from them. That is the kind of thing which we are looking at. We did, we supported an, uh, a Caribbean-wide conference, I think two years ago, in, in St. Kitts and Nevis to discuss especially this perspective, not only looking at the short term, but looking at the underlying causes, why crime and security is taking place in our 
region. Keep in mind each of our countries, the majority of the population is younger than 35 years of age. So we need to focus on that group. If we don't do that, I predict already that in 10 years time we'll have a major security crisis. If we don't provide them with employment, education or a socially acceptable lifestyle. Another burning concern of the OAS is natural disasters. The ambassador said even after countless experiences, people are still allowed to build unsafe homes in vulnerable areas. He recommends that there be more hemispheric cooperation to ensure that people is adequately prepared to minimize their risk. We see today that natural disasters are taking place in every part of the hemisphere. So it's becoming a hemispheric issue. From our, my, our perspective, we will certainly focus on the Caribbean. And the reason for that is simply that one hurricane can devastate, as happened with Hurricane Ivan here in Grenada, can devastate for 85% the economy. And we don't want that to happen. We have seen the same happening in Haiti at the beginning of this year. We see what kind of misery, what kind of uh, uh, tragedy it can bring to a country. Haiti is still not recovered from the rubble which was there. Only 2% has been cleaned up. It takes time. But at the same time, the people are suffering. And that's something we have to continue to focus on. We need more hemispheric cooperation, Caribbean cooperation, uh, on, on how to fight. Not, we can't prevent it, natural disasters will happen, but how can we mitigate it? There are many lessons to be learned here. Uh, the people build on the wrong places, on slopes, riverbeds, first thing which will go down during a hurricane is exactly those locations. So natural disaster is critically important. In the same breath, Ambassador Rimdin revealed that his organization is worried about the lack of job availability in the region because of little economic activity. He added that international organizations can't do much to assist this problem, but it has to be an effort on the part of national governments. And in that regard, I don't think much can be done completely by international organizations, it requires a clear vision, a clear determination by individual countries at national level and at sub-regional level. It is in this context that the integration process in the Caribbean is, is, is very important. There are very few countries who will look at this region as individual countries like you know trying to establish a relationship with Jamaica or with other countries or St. Lucia. When the people from outside look at this region, they see not individual countries, but they see the Caribbean as a whole. So we need to str strengthen that kind of relationship uh, and the deepening of that process. Not an easy thing to do, as we now witness, but that is the, the, the reality. So employment opportunities, which relates to education, natural disasters, crime and violence, I see as the most important priorities for politicians, but also for international organizations towards the region. Assistant General Secretary in the OAS, Ambassador Albert Ramden. The Grenada government has secured funding assistance from the World Bank Institutional Development Fund, IDF, to conduct a human resource audit of the public service. The Department of Public Administration, DPA, is the local implementing agency. To ensure the successful implementation of the project, the government has engaged the services of a regional-led consultant, Mrs. Rosemond Warrington, and a local human resource consultant, Mrs. Beryl Isaac. The work of the consultants will be supported by a cross ministerial group of public officers who will be trained to conduct human resource audits. The audit began on Tuesday with an inception visit. The five pilot institutions are the Ministries of Health, Education, Legal Affairs, Agriculture and the Supreme Court Registry. The intention is to rule out the audit to the entire public service. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back after the break.
The Spice Boys will spice it up at the National Stadium in October. The Grenada National Team takes on Guadeloupe in the first encounter at the stadium in October. Three days of high-level football at the National Stadium, October 20th, October 22nd, and October 24th. GFA International Football returns to the National Stadium in a big way. Support Team Grenada and spice it up at the football stadium, October 20th, 22nd, and 24th. Look out for tickets at all outlets in Grenada. Lock down these dates. 20, 22nd, 24th October at the National Stadium. GFA International Football. Welcome back viewers. OECS Ministers for Education.